we've made many mistakes in life. And we keep on learning. I trusted President William Ruto. The people of the region where I come from, the Mount Kenya region, trusted him. In fact, as we were preparing to go to office, nobody else trusted him. Musalia Mudavadi demanded that they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Moses Wetangula demanded that they, may, they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Um, uh, Amazon Kingi demanded the same. Alfred Mutua, everybody else. I'm the only man who trusted him. Verbally, because we are Christians, we used to go to church together. And as a Christian, I believed a fellow Christian that he would never betray me or my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me. But I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, what happened on first day is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the president is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, treating me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without composition, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the president is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected. As a Baba, who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to President William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This a done thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health now has been given to one single Asian. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate, I was there day one. And even when the Speaker asked me to sit down to listen to the charges, I decided to stand up to face my accusers. I was there the following day. I was ready for cross-examination. 
the 11 counts is nothing but malice and fiction. It was a political game by the president to get rid of me. And looking at it, I don't think the president had any intention of ever working with me. I think he just needed me to help him win the election because of my mobilization capacity and the faith that the Mount Kenya region has in me. So I should have been given an opportunity. I have asked my lawyers and they have told me the motion was not time bound. What, what is time bound is a select committee that should work for 10 days and then report to plenary. That committee was never constituted. So this matter should have continued and waited for me. I was ready for cross-examination so that I answer those 11 counts one by one. And I'm sure had I been given that opportunity, I would have persuaded the senators otherwise. I was not given that opportunity. When you look at the speed at which Renati Kachagwa is being held at that office, it's like the story of Simon Makonde. You remember that story? One who died, who was born on Monday and by Sunday was buried. The kind of efficiency that has been exhibited in holding the Gadigashagwa out of office, if this efficiency was being exhibited in the management of the affairs of this country, Kenyans would be very happy. What is the hurry? 